And this is Interviews from Quito, the programme in which we explore some of the big challenges facing this country and the region. Today, we're going straight in with the biggest political issue here right now, the deep and to many of us deeply surprising split in the ruling party, Alianza País. To discuss this, we're pleased to have with us Jimena Peña. She's a member of the National Assembly, representing Ecuadorians living in the United States and Canada. But first, let's take a look at this short video. In October, President Lenin Moreno proposed a referendum with seven questions, which deal with political, constitutional and environmental issues. A proposal that has divided Ecuador's ruling party into and won over most of the opposition. Hello, An interesting, productive, and well-argued debate has developed to help people make a well-informed and aware choice. Of course, there are opinions against this, as you'd expect in a democracy. One reaction came from Jaime Nebot, the mayor of Guayaquil, and the leader of the opposition Social Christian Party, who has long been a harsh critic of the Citizen Revolution. After a series of meetings with President Lenin Moreno, Nebot came out in favor of restoring term limits for those elected to public office, which is one of the seven questions in the referendum. Ironically, Nebot himself has ruled the city of Guayaquil for consecutive terms. Today, we ratify once again our total support for the referendum process. Another political figure supporting the referendum is the ex-presidential candidate and representative of the banks, Guillermo Lasso, along with several other former presidents. Experts state this is because of political interests. Lenin Moreno is using this referendum to develop his own way of governing, but in alliance with the opposition. The referendum has attracted very different political groups from the right and the left, which want to be a part of the political path being charted by President Lenin Moreno. So that proposal for a referendum with seven questions is at the centre of the dispute now between those in the ruling party who support Lenin Moreno and this proposal for a referendum and those who say they defend the legacy of the former president, Rafael Correa. Of course, the differences go wider that, than that. Um, Jimena Peña, I think a lot of people looking at uh, Ecuador from the outside, particularly people who've sympathised with, followed to some extent the citizen revolution over the last dec decade, are feeling a little bit confused, even dismayed, at what appears to be a crisis in the country. Is there a political crisis in Ecuador right now? Thank you very much for the invitation, Ayan. And I believe that uh, right now our political party, uh, Alianza País, is having uh, problems that uh, were supposed to be taken care of within the political party. I don't believe this is a crisis of the whole country, but uh, there is a division of uh, Alianza País, and unfortunately, we have not been able to solve those differences within the political party. And uh, we have also some uh, friends of, that we have been working on for years that now uh, go and make these problems public. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't believe we were, we're going to be able to solve these problems from now on. And I believe that a new political uh, party will probably we, will be created by the people who don't agree with President Lenin Moreno. Uh, I don't believe that the answer is that we are Koreists or maybe Leninists. I don't believe that we should uh, debate these things on personal, uh, on people, but uh, to discuss these differences uh, based on the principles of Alianza País, on the basis of our uh, citizen revolution that have not changed with Lenin Moreno. Let, let, let's go into this referendum a little bit more then. I mean, why does Ecuador need a referendum? Does it need a referendum? Well, at the beginning, Basically, in the National Assembly, we were, we, we were uh, discussing about if we really needed a referendum. However, uh, we cannot ignore that the Constitution gives this power to the President. The President has all the, the power to call this referendum on issues he believes are important for the country. And when we talked with President Moreno about the referendum, uh, he said that that was his, uh, his authority to call for one, 
and that he was going to do it. After that, uh, congressmen and women, uh, women, we decided to make proposals on the questions that were going to be asked. We presented five questions to President uh, Moreno, and then after that, he made public seven questions, of which only one was uh, one of the questions that we presented to him. However, we understand that the Constitution allowed the President to make this uh, consultation to people, and we as uh, political people, as our people who represent citizens, we cannot be opposed or we cannot be against people uh, be consulted. Jimena, let's look a bit more closely at these questions because it's quite a strange combination of questions, isn't it? I mean, there are a couple which are probably not that controversial, the one about uh, people convicted of corruption not holding pu public office, the one about uh, sexual crimes about, uh, against minors not being uh, allowed to have impunity. But if we take questions two and three, I think those are the p perhaps the most controversial ones within the, the ruling party, the first of which uh, would make it no longer possible for any kind of re-election after two periods in office, and the second one, which would restructure the Council of Citizen Parti Participation. Now, the supporters of Rafael Correa say this is quite clearly designed to remove him and to remove his supporters from positions of influence in the Ecuadorian state. That's true, isn't it? Well, in regards to the question of re-election, actually, I am re-elected. I was part of the National Assembly that approved the amendment on the Constitution that gave birth to the indefinite re-election. If you remember back in 2008, the indefinite re-election was not part of our Constitution. We changed the Constitution in 2015, I guess it was, to allow this to happen. Uh, we went to talk to people all around the country. We talk about rights and we were arguing about the rights that people have to elect uh, the person they want, regardless of the number of periods that that person was in power. Uh, however, now President Moreno believes that that uh, part of the, of the Constitution that was amendment, amended now needs to be confirmed by people. But why? And, well, he's saying that after all this, uh, the national dialogue he had with many sectors of, of Ecuadorians, uh, uh, this uh, uh, co uh, consultation was part of many, was, uh, it was a concern of many groups that he was talking to during his national dialogue. That is, that is what he said. Um, after that, uh, we understood that, in fact, if we approve, if we amended the Constitution, but now the president in power believes this, this uh, thing needs to be consulted to people, we cannot be against it. Now, as authorities, as, as congressmen and women, we believe we will go to go back to people again and to talk to them about each one of the questions and give them information. Uh, we don't necessarily agree that we need to make a campaign to people saying vote no or vote yes. We believe we need to talk to them about each question, make people understand about each one of them, and then let them people decide what is best for their country. But what do you yourself feel about re-election, for example? I mean, in 2015 you were in favour. Are you against now? Well, uh, in, back in 2015, uh, we discussed this within our, uh, our block of people. Of the, we were like 100 assembly men and women. We discussed this. And once we had a decision, we went and we voted for the decision that uh, was the most popular within our group of assembly men and women. Uh, right now, we have a different situation. Right now, uh, people is going to vote. So my personal decision, obviously, I vote in favor of the indefinite re-election. And I was talking to people about this, and I was telling them that we talk to people about rights, the rights of, uh, of people to decide who wants them to be their, their, their president, their assemblyman and woman. Uh, right now, the debate is different. President Moreno is saying, yes, but we need to have more people uh, like involved in politics. We don't want the same person to be in the same position forever because that can be dangerous for democracy. It's a different viewpoint that is not necessarily right or wrong. 
that's something that we need to understand. But in the end, it does come back to whether Rafael Correa can stand as president again, doesn't it? Yes, but it's not only Rafael Correa. Uh, we have many people, assembly men and women, that also are going to be affected. But also it's the right of people who want to become president, who want to become congressmen and women. It's, it's something like the, the debate is it's much more deeper than basically we are trying to say. We're trying to say that it's only for president, ex-president or former president Correa. But I believe the debate has to be more deep and has to talk about all these different viewpoints that are valid. There is no right or wrong. Both arguments are very are, are correct. All everything depends on what is your viewpoint, but and you'll that be is what. But you campaigning for a yes vote, won't you? Well, um, my political party right now uh, they are uh, they are uh, 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 campaigning for all, for a yes in each one of the questions. I am part of the political party, and uh, basically our group of assembly men and women we are 43. Our bancada, that's how we call it. We also have to have our own debate and decide if we are going to accept the political uh, view of our political party that we have to make campaign for all the seven questions for a yes. So that is something we need to debate and we need to decide. After that, we will give all our viewpoints, but once we take a decision, we will have to go and we will support that decision in front of people. And what about the Council of Citizen Participation? I mean, that was set up back in the Constitution, Constitution of 2008 as a sort of citizen watchdog to oversee the operations of government, correct? Yes. Why does it need to be restructured? Well, we have arguments, and we had arguments about that particular question, and we talked to them, to President Moreno. We told President Moreno that we were worried that that new uh, council will have attributions that are only part of the National Assembly. We talked to President Moreno about that. Uh, uh, however, uh, we have been talking about some people who work with President Moreno and they are saying that in fact they are not, uh, they are not going to go beyond uh, to affect the attributions of the National Assembly which is the only institution that can revoke people from their positions. What about the, the revoking the law on surplus value? That's a, a tax basically intended to combat speculation on buying and selling property. And that was very controversial. It was opposed by the conservative opposition parties back in 2015. It was passed by the assembly, yourselves included, and now you want to get rid of it. Well, in the same question, we also have infor additional information within the question that says that President Moreno will have to present a new project of law in regards to this tax on capital gains to avoid uh, speculation. So if that question wins, if, we, if the people vote for a yes in that question, within 30 days, President Moreno has to present a new project of law to fix that issue. And that law has to be approved within 30 days we, because will be a law that has, to, that has the, the condition of urgent. That means that the National Assembly will need to approve that law within 30 days. But so what kind that of means, alternative might that be? Uh, well, we will have to review the existing law that if the, if the yes wins, that law will, be, will, will not be a vigent anymore. We will have to take that law and try to get the best of it. And probably President Moreno will present a project. So we will need to compare what President Moreno is presenting, what is actually the, the law that we are getting, getting rid of, and then take the best of it and approve a new law that in, that in fact stops speculation, but that a law that does not affect everybody, because not everybody is a speculator. We as immigrants, for example, when we live far away of Ecuador, we sometimes buy land. And we buy a land because we don't have money to buy a whole house. And after some years, we sell that land, we realize some gains, and then we buy a house. Is that immigrant a speculator? Should that immigrant pay a very high tax? Probably not. Probably the speculators will be the people who buy many pieces of land, huge lands, basically, and they are the ones who actually who are speculating with this, and they are the ones who should be taxed. I so mean, we that, have that, that's to. That's an interesting argument. So, do you think that most Ecuadorians living abroad would be are opposed to the the law as it exists now? Probably yes. I remember when I was in campaign during winter time. 
at the beginning of the year and in fact I saw uh, I heard some people that were complaining about that so I guess we have to analyze the law and see in fact if the law was affecting people who buy land like you see with savings because they don't have uh, all the money they need to buy a house and we need to dif dif differentiate these people from the people who is really uh, speculating over the price of land so I believe that after uh, the, this uh, consultation of people, the National Assembly will have a great job to do because we will be the ones who approve the new law and we have to approve this law within 30 days. But I, I think to a lot of people it feels like a concession, you know, a concession to the traditional opposition parties on the part of the government. Probably it could be because actually President Moreno met with many people and many people who are who, who make business out of this speculation and once again uh, that's a question that President Moreno is asking to people. People will, will have the last word. That's why it's very important to go back to people and present each one of the questions so people can understand. If we say everything no, we are saying no to the parents of children who had been abused and who had, be, who had been victims of, of um, impunity, for example. So we have to analyze each question. I believe that saying everything no or everything yes is not the right way to, communi to communicate to people. We should be responsible, explain each question, and then invite people to, to take the best option for them. But there is a strange situation now, isn't there? You have half, a little, something more than half apparently of Alianza País supporting the referendum. You have almost all of the opposition, the right-wing opposition parties supporting the referendum and you have a, 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 a su substantial minority of Alianza País opposing the referendum. Doesn't that make you feel somewhat uncomfortable? Well, of course. It's not a happy situation. Unfortunately, when we see people who friends who have worked very closely during the last years and, and when we see their, their position that is a radical position, uh, ob obviously we feel bad and also we feel upset when we see uh, Guillermo Lasso, for example, saying that the consultation is his proposal and trying to say that it's his victory. I believe that beyond the political positions of Lasso and, and, and people who support President Correa should be the position of people. The consultation, the popular consultation is an instrument that should deepen <coughs> democracy and that should help President Moreno to take the best decisions based on the, on the willingness of his, of his people. And I guess that is leaving the debate. You see right now we have politicians who, who are trying to make of this consultation a political gain when we should talk to people saying that uh, the popular consultation is, is an instrument for the president to hear, to listen to people and to take decisions for people, not for politicians who were opposed to him and who will oppose to him probably in the next coming months. But when you, you talk about your friends or former friends, you know, who are now on the other side of the argument. Yes, you know? friends. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> but when they say to you, look, this is clearly a concession or even worse, a betrayal, you know, to the right, that you're basically adopting the agenda of the conservative parties in Ecuador, how do you reply? Well, uh, once again, people is the one, are the ones who, who have to decide. We are politicians and we work for our constituencies. If President Moreno, after this national dialogue, believes that this uh, popular consultation is going to help him to, to make his government stronger, who, um, which is also a sign that he's listening to the different sectors of the Ecuadorian population. And he believes that's right for, for Ecuador. Uh, we believe more than in his vision, we believe in, in people, in the right of our people to go and to talk and to vote. Um, we feel like worry about the, the questions about the, the Council for the Citizen Participation and basically some of us also express uh, worries about the, the question of the re-election. 
That, those are facts. Some of us are worried about those things. However, we are organic and after a decision is taken uh, from our political party and from our group of assembly men and women, we have to follow, we have to, we have to have discipline and we will have to work on that, on that decision that we will take after we have a debate based on the reality of the country. And once again, I guess the message is for people. Read each one of the questions, analyze them and take the decision that is best for you. But do you think the result of this will be to take Ecuador in a different direction? I mean, for example, apart from the referendum itself, you know, there was the dialogue with the business sectors. Uh, if I remember rightly, the business sectors put something like 139 different proposals to President Lenin Moreno, uh, many of them to do with lowering taxes on businesses. Um, and he accepted, I think, 120 of them, 80%, something like that. Uh, you know, isn't that, again, sort of steering the economy much more towards the sort of free market uh, the, uh, model favoured by the right and away from the kind of protections that were developed during the 10 years of the citizen revolution? Well, we just approved um, an economic law and actually that economic law was very close to what we had been approved, approving with President Correa. Uh, the, the national budget, we just approved it. And the same thing, we approve it with the votes of the people who support now ex President, Cor President Correa, and we had enough votes to approve the national budget. So the political, I mean, the economic decisions that are being taken care of by President Moreno are very similar to uh, what uh, President Correa did in the past. So basically, we can say that at least in the economic aspect of the government, we are in the same path as we were with ex-president Correa. We have heard many things like, yes, we are taking all the politics of the right, of the right uh, people, but that's not true. Because I believe the most important instruments that can show you the right of a government are his economic policies. And if those economic policies are very similar to the ones we have been implementing during the last decade, that is telling us that we are on the same path. But uh, 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 isn't the government moving towards lower taxes on business, basically, more flexible labour market? Basically not. Not until now, I don't know in the future, but for now, for example, he uh, reduced uh, taxes, but for uh, small businesses, and uh, um, small and medium businesses, and he raised taxes to big businesses from 22% to 25%. And there is uh, something interesting about that decision. I believe that back in 2010 or 2011, a former President Correa reduced taxes to those same businesses from 25% to 22%. President Moreno changes that now and increases taxes from 22 to 25 to the same group. So back then in 2010 or 2011, it was impossible to disagree with the decision of President Correa. Right now, unfortunately, everything President Lenin Moreno says, these, these uh, 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 friends, that support President Correa, they are the first ones that leave and, and speak out, exaggerating some things also. So that, those are the things that we don't agree with. We believe that we have to support President Moreno because he's the president of Ecuador, he's the president of our political movement, and we have to make those, uh, we have to support him uh, if he goes according to the national plan that won in April 2nd. The national uh, plan uh, that he needs to follow, we will be supporting him if he goes within the plan that won in April. Let, let, I want to go back to your own constituency, you know, the Ecuadorians in the United States and Canada, and, and in Europe as well, because I think you're... Uh, um, we have two more friends, I mean, uh, assembly men and women from Europe, but I represent Ecuadorians in the United States and Canada. Right, but there's a parliamentary committee for, for uh, migrants, Ecuadorian migrants, exactly. which you're involved in, I think. Correct. Yeah? So, how does it look to them? I mean, it always struck me, in, even when I was in Britain, for example, you know, that the, the kind of treatment and the services that the governments of the citizen revolution provided to Ecuadorian migrants in London, for example, you know, was unlike anything I'd ever seen any Latin American country provide to its migrants. Aren't they worried about what's going to happen? Are they worried about losing some of that? 
But basically, that's why we are here. That's our job, to make sure that we don't lose what we want and work so our government can improve the support they give, the government gives to our, uh, to our immigrants in the United States and Canada and the whole world. Right now, for example, in the United States, our immigrants are having a very hard time with the policy, immigrant, uh, with the immigration policies of Donald Trump, who uh, become in jail because of their immigration status. For example, right now, before the citizen revolution, before Rafael Correa, that was impossible. Nobody cared about immigrants before the citizen revolution. And that is something that we are always thankful for to President Correa and to our political party. And there is something that we actually want to keep working on with President Lenin Moreno so he can keep these uh, public policies in behalf of Ecuadorian immigrants. And has he made it clear to you that he will keep those policies, those programs, those plans? Yes, basically, uh, um, like a few weeks ago, uh, also the Minister of Education, he approved the education online to Ecuadorian immigrants who didn't finish high school. So that is something uh, real, uh, very new, and that we are very happy to see that now our immigrants who didn't finish high, high school will have the chance to study online thanks to, the, to, the, to their government that is uh, still worried about their needs and that will be trying to fulfill them progressively. Where do you think, Jimena, this is going? You know, I mean, Okay, the, we have this conflict now. It must be difficult for you, old friends, on different sides of the divide now. In a year, two years' time, is, this, is there going to be a new pact between you know, your part of Alianza País and the, some of the conservative parties, some kind of center block? What's going to happen? Well, my, my wish is that in the future we are able to, 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 to meet again with our with our friends uh, who belong to Alianza País and that now are taking the, the sad decision to leave our political party. We believe that we have a lot of in common with them. We were working together for the same causes, for, for the same principles, and I believe that is not changing. But with all the bitterness and hard words that we've heard in recent weeks and months between the two sides, do you truly believe that's possible, that reconvergence? Well, I, I remember the phrase of former President Correa that uh, they might steal everything, but don't let us, de, don't let us steal our hope. So we st I still have the hope that in the future um, we were able to, to join again together. Regardless of that, our compromise is with people. And if they leave uh, Alianza País, we have to keep working with Alianza País. Alianza País was my, it's, it's the only political party I have belonged to. And I believe that we have to fight within the political party. I don't believe in, in leaving, leaving the political party. We have to construct in, it, within the political party. We have to work for internal democracy. We have to work for um, a mechanism of debate that help us to, to work on our differences. I guess that that's what we are going to keep doing with President Moreno and uh, actually with all the leaders that right now are uh, representing our political party. And we hope that in 2019, Alianza País will be ready for the elections that we will have for municipalities and prefecturas. And in 2021, we hope to have a new candidate uh, for president uh, for, for Ecuador. Thank you very much, Jimena. I'm afraid we've run out of time. It's obviously a complicated issue. There's a lot more to say about this, and we will be exploring it more in future programs with other guests. But for, for the moment, uh, that's all we have time for today. I'm Ian Bruce. This is Interviews from Quito. Until next time.